In this video, I'd like to focus on the difference between pressure and flow and how these two are related and what the differences are. People new to hydraulics really struggle with this concept of pressure and flow. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the differences. So I have set up a very basic demonstration here for you. So what I have is two double acting cylinders running into a normally closed valve, okay, or just a valve that's closed. And I want to talk about how we actually will change from something being pressurized and how the pressure changes when flow occurs, okay? So the idea here is if this valve were open and I were to apply pressure to here, oil would flow through here and it would lift this, okay? This is a very common hydraulic demonstration. But with the valve here, we can actually look at how the differences between pressure and flow and how they have to interact together. So if this is closed and I, am, and I put a force on here, okay, I put some weight on this, that's going to create pressure. And that pressure is going to be based on how much force is being applied and the area in which it's being applied through. Okay, in this case, the bore of the piston, or the square inches of the uh, cylinder. So, when I push this on there, if this valve is closed, there's no flow. This cylinder will stay here, and all that will happen is my pressure will go up. And that, of course, again, will be based off of how much force is being applied compared to the area. Okay? Now, if I open this valve, a couple of things happen. The amount of pressure is not going to be based off of how much force in the area of this cylinder. The pressure is going to be based off of how much pressure does it take to allow oil to flow from this cylinder into here and lift this up. And so if I were to come here and draw some amount of force here that's required to, or needed to lift this, and let's say this was just some large number, like 10,000, okay? And then this was 100 pounds, okay? The amount, of, the, the amount of pressure in the system isn't going to be based off of what is being read by when I take 1,000 divided by, let's just say this is, you know, for simplicity purposes, 10 square inches, okay? I'm not going to get 1,000 PSI here. But if this one here is also, let's say, uh, let's say one square inch, okay? Well, I'm gonna it's gonna require 100 psi to move this. So I'm not gonna read 1,000 psi here, okay? I'm gonna read 100 everywhere because of old man Pascal's law. So while flow is happening, okay, my pressure is going to be about 100 psi. And this weight will move up, this will go down. Now, let's say this cylinder has a shorter stroke than this. So as soon as this gets to the top, and this is still right here, then my pressure will go up to 1,000. Because there's no flow happening, all right? And so what happens in these circuits is, if there's no flow, you will get what we would refer to as max pressure. But if flow is capable, because there's a force required over here that can be provided, this will actually flow and raise this up, and the pressure will actually be set here, okay? So remember that flow is actually, flow has to happen in a hydraulic system, okay? It's the stuff that does stuff. So flow here is going to have to happen, and so we have to control it properly. All right? Now, in a real circuit, things are a little different, okay? And so I'm going to go ahead and set that up for you. Now, this is a very simplified, very, very simplified hydraulic circuit. And so what happens here is my pump is now the cylinder that was here that was supplying that force. The force is coming from the motor. And if this valve is closed, or if you have a directional control valve that is closed there, no flow is going to happen. And so in a hydraulic system, 
pressure is going to keep rising until flow happens. Okay? And so um, here, if this is closed, and I have this pressure relief valve, and I have other videos on that if you're not familiar with it yet, let's say I have this set at 1,000 PSI. Okay? This pump will create up to 1,000 PSI, and then it will dump over to here. But let's say uh, to move this load right here, uh, based off the force and the inches, it requires 500 PSI. Well, as soon as I open this up, oil will quit flowing through here because the pressure will drop. Pressure will drop to 500 PSI while that flow is happening. All right? And so this flow is going to come through here and it's going to lift this cylinder up. And then, as soon as it gets to here, I'm at maximum resistance, and so my pressure is going to begin to go up, and it's going, because flow has stopped. So pressure will rise until it gets to 1,000 PSI, and then it will get dumped over the relief valve. And this is the difference between, we talk about maximum pressure and flow and how they work together. Remember, a pump's job is to create just enough pressure to create flow. This is really, really important. I just want to, if this takes 400 PSI, it will only create 400 PSI. If it takes 200 PSI, it will only take 200 PSI. But if my load here, let's say required uh, 1500 PSI, it would never move because this would be my path of least resistance, okay? And so that's why this pressure relief valve is so important. Let me give you another example here. Let's say I put this cylinder back here and I again, provide enough force to create, let's say, 1,500 PSI, okay? But at this T right here, okay, this one right here, it wasn't installed correctly, and it can only handle, let's say, 1,100 PSI. Well, when this weight gets set on here and pressure starts to build, if there's nowhere for that to relief, if no flow is happening, guess where flow will happen? It will happen right here. And this will actually burst. And guess what happens to pressure then? Pressure drops off and you get oil everywhere. Okay? So the concept of understanding how much pressure is required to create flow is one that is really, really important. Okay? So let me demonstrate this to you on our uh, transparent hydraulic system. So here's a demonstration of what we just talked about on the board. So I have a double acting cylinder that's filled with hydraulic oil to a pressure gauge through a 2-2 valve, or just a ball valve, or going through a valve, into a single acting cylinder. Now this single acting cylinder has a spring on it, which will be important here in a little bit. So this is a little bit different than what we demonstrated on the uh, board, but it actually will make sense in a little bit. So, now, I'm going to apply a force to this. All right, now, imagine that I were to put a steel rod or some weight on here, all right? And if I let this sit here, I'm, a certain amount of pressure is going to develop. All right, now this rod doesn't weigh too much and this hydraulic piston area is sized where I'll get a little bit of a pressure difference or a pressure generated in here, okay? But as I take this force away, which is what this rod was, my pressure goes away. I put the rod back on, I get a little bit of pressure, all right? That's created by uh, the cylinder, the area of the cylinder where the force of this is being applied to. But for this demonstration, I'm gonna apply a little more force than that piece of rod has the capability of doing. So you watch this uh, pressure come. As I apply a force to here, I'm going to apply a force to this area, and I'm going to see how it generates pressure. Now this pressure is in bars, but we're just looking for a shift. We're not looking for the specifics. So I come and I push, and I'm getting up to about four bars, okay? Now, notice I have no flow here, okay? If this moved, it's only because there was a little air trapped in here, but I'm at about three or four bars here as I'm applying my pressure, and then that snaps off. So I can get up to about three or four bars with the amount of force that I'm applying here. Now, the reason I'm not getting really any flow is because this is closed. So this closed system, with the exception of this air that's trapped in there, 
is really locked in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up. Now when I push this, I will have flow. The pressure that will be created here will no longer be a, a, a symptom of how much force I'm creating here, but how much it takes to compress this spring. Now, the spring in here is our load. It's hard for me to put like a real heavy load right here to show you move, but the compressing this spring is the exact same resistance that we would if we were to be moving some type of physical load. So I'm gonna come in, and as I apply pressure here, you can see there's some air bubbles moving, and the cylinder moves. The amount of pressure that it takes is a symptom of compressing the spring, not of how much I'm forcing. Now, I had to really press on this to compress the spring because this spring is pretty tough. But um, you can see what happens here. So let's demonstrate it again. I'm going to push down on this, and we'll see when this thing starts to move. So it's moving right now, and I'm at about 2 PSI, or 2 bars, okay? The more it compresses, the harder I have to apply. So I'm at four bars to get this thing to move about an inch and a half, okay? Now when I release it, the force of this spring decompressing will create flow in the opposite direction, okay? Forcing the oil to come back to here. And this is the idea of pressure and flow. So again, flow happens at a certain pressure to move something. Pressure is created regardless of if there is flow or not. When I had no flow here, when I had this closed like this, I was creating pressure. When I was pushing this, there was pressure, but no flow. Okay, so the pressure wasn't based off of what the load was. I hope I've said that enough. So anyway, I, I hope this helped uh, understand a little bit of the difference between pressure and flow. Now again, in most hydraulic systems, 90, many hydraulic systems, this, this force here that I'm generating is being created by the pump, okay? It's being created by the pump. So um, it's going to have flow no matter what, which is why we have pressure relief valves, things like that. So I could easily tee this off and have this running into it like I did in the demonstration, but um, I have other videos on that as well, okay? So I hope this video helped. Um, if you uh, enjoyed the video, um, I, it would be great if you could hit the like button and then subscribe. So I hope this helped with your hydraulic understanding. Thanks for watching.